So here's the video that everybody has probably wanted from me. Now, if you're gonna choose syrup, me personally, I don't consume syrup. But if you have to choose, remember, always give it a little bit of a flick around and you're gonna see high fructose corn syrup here. So that is an automatic no. Another reason this is an automatic no is because of Caramel Keller. Now, if we had to choose, obviously, the pure organic maple syrup. That is what you're looking for. You're looking for maple syrup, maybe agave syrup. It all depends on what you have access to. But the reason that this is gonna be better is because it's made with organic maple syrup. There's no artificial sugars in there that are gonna mess with your glucose. So then when it comes to oats, yes, if you wanna buy Quaker oats, have fun. These are the oats that I use. And then you can even go one level deeper and find, I mean, all oats are supposed to be gluten-free by example, but I'm just gonna tell you that I use these in the shakes that I consume almost every single day. Now, if you have to choose oils when you cook food, learn about AGE production, but let me show you the oil. So coconut oil is gonna have your medium chain triglycerides in it. Avocado oil, as you can see, it has a 500 high heat cooking. And so for instance, if you're using a low heat oil, you're gonna see it smoke. And oil has a smoke point. So if you're cooking with oils, make sure that they're a high heat oil. As you can see, high heat oil, artificial flavored with natural garlic. So natural roasted garlic flavor. I would honestly take avocado oil and chop up garlic and make it together. We, oh, we do not use these. Why? Because it's canola oil, coconut oil, palm oil, soy lectin to bind it together, and some anti-foaming agent that I've never heard of before. When it comes to all pickles, you need to find your pickles in a cold area. It's because they are better for your gut microbiome health, and majority of the ones, no matter which one you're going to go to here on the shelf, they're going to contain a bunch of ingredients that we don't want. doesn't matter if it's cane sugar instead of high fructose corn syrup. And the ones that would have, have high fructose corn syrup in it would be these. And you can see high fructose corn syrup. So if you're going to consume pickles, have them after a workout. They're better than a Gatorade, apparently based on books and research, but don't have the ones with high fructose corn syrup. Surprisingly enough, uh, this Tabasco sauce, distilled vinegar, red pepper, and salt, it's not bad, but if you're not getting sea salt, I have read before that regular salt by itself actually messes with the fermentation process of vegetables in your gut, which produces a little bit less of the neurotransmitters that you need. So the only reason I would say to avoid this one, this one's not bad at all, so if you're looking for some heat, then uh, try this one. But you would want one with like sea salt, so technically I would make this yourself. Now remember, everything name brand is an absolute no. We do not consume that because they've cut corners for production. But when you come over to Sunkissed Tuna, right, here's a little bit of a different conversation. Obviously, we're not gonna go for these random ones that are filled with ingredients. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you come across ranch, you're gonna see that the ranch is gonna have uh, monosodium glutamate in it, so that's a big no. So you can see here, this one has like extra virgin olive oil, sea salt. The rule of thumb in the majority of what you're doing is paying attention to the ingredients. This one right here has, uh, it, it should say tuna and water. I don't like the fact that it's vegetable broth. So you're looking for something like this. Tuna, water, salt. I don't consume tuna, just giving you different options. And as you can see, mac and cheese, these are the companies. They now have Flamin' Hot Cheeto mac and cheese, which is total trash. Now a cool thing about rice, um, jasmine rice is actually pretty good but what you wanna do with rice is make your rice, put it in the refrigerator, and have it the next day. So this is where meal prepping becomes important. And then talk to our dietitian. we'll write you a diet plan, but you're pretty safe with most of the beans that you consume. Yes, there's research behind lectins, this and that, lentils. It's just a great way to have carbohydrates and fiber in the same meal. You see 27 and seven, that's a very good dietary fiber to carbohydrate ratio. If you're consuming bread, um, this is a relevant brand of bread. Yes, it's the most expensive bread, but it doesn't have preservatives in it. And then rule of thumb when you're in the freezer section, pretty much there's nothing valuable except frozen fruit and then frozen vegetables. So like, no, absolutely no, uh, definitely not. So rule of thumb if you're in the frozen section is yes, it's totally cool to eat your frozen vegetables and your frozen fruits, and there's a book and it talked about research with nutrient locking. So from farm to freezer to freezer to your table, you're locking in a little bit of the nutrients. Lunch meats, regardless if they say 100% natural, you can see no artificial ingredients, nitrates, preservatives, absolutely still a no. And the reason it's a no is due to 
25% of your daily value of sodium, but that's with 56 grams. And most people don't weigh out the grammage. If you decide to weigh out the grammage, then, you know, if this is what you really want to eat, I'm not going to stop you, but I wouldn't consume it. So when you start looking at yogurts, you want to be looking at kefir. So as you see, kefir has live and active probiotics. So pre and probiotics. Uh, I don't know how many billion this has, but a roll of thumb, like two, what is this, 20 to 25 billion CFU, that's good. So 20 to 25 billion CFU, that's, that's about what you want. But remember, talk to your doctor, talk to your PCP, talk to somebody smarter than me, consider working with our dietitian. Now I know a lot of people like to consume the juices, however, in the juice, you gotta see that there's no dietary fiber. So per serving of these fruits and vegetables, you're not going to receive the correct amount of fiber, and it's basically all just concentrates. So these, unfortunately, we're not going to consume. So garlic is a yes, avocados are a yes, tomatoes are a yes, depending on what your gut microbiome needs or doesn't need. If your PLUs start with a four, that means it was sprayed with some sort of pesticide, we avoid that. Remember, more color is better, so instead of potatoes, have sweet potatoes or yams, there's more nutrient content in them. Potatoes are among the highest satiety signal foods. That's why when people eat steak, potatoes, and broccoli, they feel extremely full. So these will trigger your satiety signals. Squash, have at it. It's a good amount of carbohydrates and fiber. Bok choy is gut microbiome healthy. Kale is gut microbiome healthy. Green cabbage is not bad. But then when you get over here to these, the way that you test this is on top. If you push on it and it's firm, that's, a, that's a gonna last you a while. If you push on it and it's loose, it's not going to last very long. So rutabaga, yes. Turnips, yes. Ginger root, yes. Majority of the things that you're going to see here are going to be absolute yes. Read The Plant Paradox by Stephen Gunthrie. Make your own decisions on eggplants. Remember, broccoli should not be hydrophobic. And then if you don't like broccoli, consider broccolini with coconut oil and sea salt. It is extremely good. But Brussels sprouts are a yes. Corn, to me, is an absolute no, but you know, it's, it's better than eating a bag of chips. There is a lot of research behind these celery juices that people drink. I have not looked into it very far, but let's get the one that's not in the plastic container. You may or may not have known this, but there's a difference between male and female peppers. So four and three. Do your own research on those. One of them you're supposed to cook, one of them you're not supposed to cook. Which one? The one with four or the one with three? So when you're looking at your vegetables, then enjoy, seriously. You really can't go wrong with the majority of the vegetables over here. Mushrooms are a great source of potassium and vitamin C. Even your seasonings themselves, get as natural as you can. And then you notice the difference between these heads and the color of these heads. Trust me, there's a difference. And I encourage you to learn why they look different. But remember, broccoli, same thing. If your broccoli heads are a little bit loose versus tough, they're gonna last longer. So directly after workouts, blueberries actually travel your GLUT5 receptor. They're a fructose and they're a very quickly absorbed fuel source, which is fructose, fructose, fructose. But if you had to choose between raspberries, strawberries, blackberries, or blueberries, you're gonna choose blueberries or raspberries. But remember, talk to your doctor, talk to your PCP, talk to somebody smarter than me. Those are just uh, berries that are researched and have a lot of use. Kiwis are a great source of potassium and a majority of human beings do not get enough potassium in a day. And you see the PLU? This is an organic one, so that's with a nine. Over here, this is an organic one with a nine. This is a non-organic one with a four. So those aren't checkout numbers, those are systematic. And don't forget to crush your garlic. So obviously the levels are gonna be minimum, but if you had to choose between green and red, look up something called resveratrol. Red grapes are apparently gonna contain more resveratrol than green grapes, however, pretty sure they're gonna be the same nowadays because our soil microbiome has been depleted. If you have to choose your pistachios, remember, count the ingredients. Get the ones that have pistachios and sea salt, which would be right next to it. Eggs are hard on your gut microbiome, so make sure that your gut microbiome is in a good place. And, and do not do the egg whites thing. You're gonna miss all of the nutrients. So if you are fasting, look up your green teas. Look up Dr. Jason Fung. That's J-A-S-O-N-F-U-N-G. You can also read the book called The Obesity Code. But if you are fasting, green tea is going to decrease your appetite, decrease your nutrient absorption. It's gonna upregulate your central nervous system. And I forget it does one other thing. But there's a lot of research behind green tea and weight loss. So this is a place I'd like you to do your own research, but medium roast shows up as the best. But look at the difference between dark roast, medium roast, and light roast for the gut microbiome health. Just to give you a hint, it's medium roast. If you have to choose waters, try to find your waters that have alkaline in them. Obviously this one's going to have alkaline and other ingredients in it, so we're not gonna take that one. 
Before you dive into supplementation, consider getting your supplements from real food. There is a difference between a supplement and a phytonutrient that comes from the nutrients in food. It is processed in your body differently. But if you're somewhere that doesn't have sunlight, there is a lot of research behind the seasons and seasonal depression. We have all heard of that before. Stomach acids, you can literally Google stomach acid cancer lawsuit and you're gonna see that a majority of the anti-acids that exist in our world are connected with a stomach cancer lawsuit. So, ain't that fun. And if you don't believe it, realize that there's lawyers, law firms, running advertisements for this type of stuff. So I don't think the lawyers would lie. And Google wouldn't let you run advertisements if it wasn't true. Unfortunately, I don't think there are any here. But if you're going for your almond butters, your peanut butters, make sure there's oil on top. And that's due to the room temperature, allowing it to create oil. And then this one has palm oil in it. So I would say no. They're close, but you know, the oil on top plus the palm oil, just because the palm oil, I'd say no. So you're gonna to wanna to find one that just has one single ingredient. It should not have multiple ingredients in it. When you get over to your salsas, I challenge you to make your own salsa. It's gonna be a little bit better. I don't know about sitting in a plastic container, but hey, you know, it's the best we can do right now in the world we live in. And then remember we mentioned pickles being in the chilled section. Now, I don't really know these brands off the top of my head, but you can see cucumbers, water, salt, garlic spices, yeah, sodium benzate's the preservative. It could be much worse than that, but turmeric and natural flavoring. So try to get them from like a locally sourced farm. If you absolutely need to consume cheese, uh, look for your goat, bison, and sheep milk. Look up casein A1 proteins in regular cow's milk. Look up type 1 diabetes rates in countries that consume a lot of cow's milk. And then look up the type 1 diabetes rates in the other three countries consuming the casein A2 proteins. But when you're looking at this, you're looking at, you know, if you really need cheese, uh, feta is one that the dietitian would probably end up suggesting to you, but try to find your goat, bison, and sheep's milk if you really truly need cheese. Obviously, we don't consume high fructose corn syrup or aspartame. You don't even want to get me started whenever it comes to the stuff that you put on your body. Now, if you're going to use turmeric, you're going to want to include black pepper. You're going to miss out on 2,000% of the absorption ratio. So get your turmerics, find your black peppers. Uh, just spices in general, majority of them are going to be completely fine for you. I personally, when I'm breaking my fast, there is turmeric in what I'm breaking my fast in. There is also, I gotta find them, hang on. Unfortunately, there's no cinnamon, but I will use cinnamon. It's healthy for your gut microbiome and digestion. I also use ginger. And if anybody's looking for a specific diet plan, you're more than welcome to reach out to our dietitian. Check out the 24 page paper of healthy foods. It's going to be linked down below and do what feels right because at the end of the day, you are what you eat. You're now going to be able to understand if you had to choose between all of these almonds, we're gonna choose this one based on the ingredients. If we had to choose between the chocolates, well, once again, anything above 70% is gonna be considered heart healthy. Me personally, I go for the one that has the best dietary fiber to carbohydrates ratio, and I just got finished with a workout, so I'm definitely gonna be having some pomegranate juice. So remember, mind your gut and you will in fact keep your mind. And uh, yeah, it's best I can do. I used to eat all this stuff, like all that stuff behind me, cookies, yeah, I used to stuff them down my throat. And uh, then I'd feel sick a little bit later. And you'll learn why in time if you decide to eat healthy. There's a reason why people eat healthy, because it makes them feel great. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, let me know. See ya.